Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. New at noon right now, a portion of Stone Oak Parkway is blocked following a natural gas leak. Tiffany Huertas joining us live on the north side. So Tiffany, how's this impacting the area? Yeah, CPS Energy says it's going to be a few more hours of that repair for that gas line. And right now we are at the corner of Stone Oak Parkway and Knights Cross Drive. Officers have blocked vehicles from going north on Stone Oak Parkway up to around Arrow Hill. And if you see this way, you can see CPS Energy is still working on this issue and this will not be complete until around 4 p.m. Now this all started around 9 this morning. CPS Energy says gas crews are working to make repairs after a contractor working near the intersection of Arrowstone and Vineyard Drive damaged an underground gas line. San Antonio police, fire, CPS Energy and Hazmat were out here this morning. CPS Energy worked on shutting the gas off and crews were monitoring the air quality. Right now there are no evacuations and no injuries are reported. And again, 4 p.m. is around the time that these repairs will be complete. And if you can avoid the area because traffic will be picking up, it is coming around lunchtime. Reporting from Stone Oak, Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Tiffany. Taking a live look out at the Alamo City, 67 degrees. There are much bluer skies where Tiffany was than what we're seeing here, Justin. Cloudy, cloudy, cloudy. Yeah, those clouds, uh, they're kind of thickening up just as you go south and east of San Antonio. So you'll run into some more clouds, and that's where we still have some leftover rain showers. It did rain overnight, by the way. Some lightning and thunder if it woke you up last night. We had a little bit of rain come through San Antonio. Right now, that rain is closer to the coast and beginning to move away. You can see the live radar there. A lot of this action starting to move northeast, and you'll see the heavier showers move towards the Houston area a little bit later today. We still got some clouds, though, and those clouds will stick around for the next uh, several hours. You can see the clouds here kind of uh, going right down the middle of Bear County. So you get into the northwestern parts of Bear County, it is uh, sunnier, and you'll see more sun this afternoon if you're south and east of town quite a bit more cloud cover and it will make a difference with temperatures too. Where there is more sun 72 in Hondo underneath the clouds though 64 Kennedy 64 in Gonzales close to 70 right now and mostly sunny in Kerrville and around Bear County upper 60s at least here at the moment. Case out 12 hour forecast. We'll keep uh, a few clouds in the forecast through uh, this evening. We'll top out close to 72 and then look for clouds to build back into the area again tomorrow morning with uh, quite a bit of cloud cover next couple days before our next storm system arrives and brings more chances for rain, maybe some thunderstorms, maybe a couple strong storms too. We'll talk more about that forecast here in just a bit. Thank you, Justin. Well, San Antonio police tell us a woman's actions at a Halloween party ended with a baby in the hospital, and now that woman is in trouble with the law. So take a look, 33-year-old Eloisa Fraga. She was arrested just yesterday, and police say she was playing with a gun at a party early Sunday when it went off. Now that bullet from the gun went through a cell phone into the chest of an 18 month old boy. Now the party held at a southwest side home on Palomino Drive. The owner telling KSAT News that the whole thing was an accident and involved party guests. Now police say the baby's parents initially thought that he was hurt by the cell phone exploding, but doctors determined that 18 month old had been shot. Right now he's being treated at the hospital. And a day after being convicted of murder, the punishment phase is now underway for Jessica Briones. A jury found Briones guilty yesterday of the death of her four-year-old daughter, Olivia, and that was back in 2017. After three weeks of testimony, it only took a jury a little over an hour to come back with that guilty verdict. So far during the punishment phase, several witnesses uh, for the state have taken the stand and the defense will put their witnesses on stand later this afternoon. Briones is facing anywhere from five to 99 years in or life in prison. Well, nearly a year ago, a carjacker shot a woman in the face at the Alamo Quarry Market. Alana Castaneda, she has fought so hard to recover, not only physically, but also mentally and emotionally. She talked with Lee Waldman about her progress over the last year. My like perspective on life has completely changed because that night I remember being in this like limbo between like life and death. That balance between life and death narrowly tipping in Alana Castaneda's favor nearly one year ago. On November 2nd, 2021, police say then 18 year old Julio Cesar Rivera shot Castaneda in the face at the Alamo Quarry Market all because he wanted her car. That was the hardest battle. That was the hardest thing I've ever been through in my life was just coming in and out of it. 
She's been through hours of physical therapy, several surgeries, including one to reconstruct her orbital floor. The mental struggle, just as hard. I feel like so happy just to be here with my family still, and, and that's great, but I do have my moments where I'm like, maybe like, you know, why did this happen to me? Asaneda was touched by what happened in Uvalde on May 24th. She made the journey there to offer support, knowing how it feels to be impacted by gun violence. Kids do not need to be out here ruining people's lives and taking innocent lives away from families and friends. It's not okay. The man accused of shooting her is still awaiting trial. Castaneda says it was hard to see him at a court appearance. This past year, she has found comfort in a trauma support group. She hopes sharing her story will help someone else. If my story can help somebody else out there, whatever they're going through, then everything that I did go through was worth it. Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. Amazing to see her recovery. New at noon, more than a year after a deadly shooting, police are no closer to finding a teen's killer. However, they're hoping someone out there can help change that by providing tips. Police say in July of last year, someone shot and killed 17-year-old Darnillo Garza near Oblate in San Pedro. Officers tell us the 17-year-old got a message on Instagram asking him to go outside to meet someone, and that's when callers reported hearing gunshots and screaming. Police say three people were seen running away from the scene. They have not been identified, but if you know something that can help officers with this case, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. Well, now to a possible vaccine for RSV. ABC's Rena Roy reports Pfizer now releasing data on trials for a shot for pregnant women trying to combat the respiratory illness. That illness hitting children so hard, not only across the country, but across Bear County. A potential new weapon in the fight against RSV. Pfizer saying its vaccine against the respiratory virus is safe for pregnant women and effective in helping protect their babies. This is a tremendous breakthrough. The vaccine would be given to expecting mothers in the late second to third trimester in one shot. They would then pass the antibodies to their babies. RSV has a significant impact in our pediatric population with over 50,000 hospitalizations each year in kids under the age of five. The pharmaceutical company says early studies show 82% efficacy in preventing severe sickness during the first 90 days of life and 69% efficacy through the first six months. RSV uh, infects everyone, but among young children, the most vulnerable are those in the first few months of life. We have a high probability now of protecting against serious illness and hospitalization. Mackenzie Michaels says her three month old son Everett came down with RSV and ended up hospitalized for four days. It was pretty scary, you know, sitting there watching him breathe. I'm just glad we got it as early as we did or it could have been worse. Many hospitals across the country feeling the strain amid a spike in respiratory illnesses, including RSV and the flu. About 76% of the nation's 40,000 pediatric hospital beds are full, with eight states reporting more than 90% of their pediatric beds are occupied. Though the new vaccine won't be available in time to help this current spike, the FDA and CDC could give the green light for next year. Pfizer says the data is promising for the same vaccine for people 65 and older. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Here at home, firefighters across the city are banding together to help those with muscular dystrophy. The San Antonio Fire Department kicked off its Fill the Boot campaign, and the pandemic put a kink in their, in their plans the past couple of years, but now you'll see firefighters on the streets once again with boots in hand. All right, it, it was a weekend filled with sports. We didn't see UTSA play because, well, they had a rest week. They are back, and they are motivated as ever. We hear from head coach Jeff Trailer in just a bit. And a local college has big plans for a park on the city's south side. Not only will it be a learning tool for students, but they're also working on a way to better connect some city park trails. Welcome back. A donation is set to give a Southside Park a big boost. The San Antonio River Authority and Texas A&M University San Antonio, they are coming together, increasing accessibility to Espada Park. 
this is a, this is an amazing connection to the Mission Trail. Uh, the city of San Antonio put in a bike trail that connects the 281 over here to Espada Track, and the long-term goal is to connect A&M San Antonio to this trail. So, you, someone from A&M San Antonio would be able to ride their bike from campus to the Alamo on the trail, and that's that's one of the big ideas that we're very excited about. And I'm sure many others excited about that too. The school also wants to create an outdoor learning laboratory at the park. That's for field experiments and planning is set to begin very soon. Texas A&M San Antonio says changes could begin over the next five years. It has been so amazing to see San Antonio, Texas A&M grow over the last few years. And you know, speaking of the trails out there, Justin, is it a good day to, to hit the trails, go for a little walk? Vegas, you know, it actually feels pretty nice out there. We're in the 60s and 70s right now. The, the rain has moved out, so we're just left with some cloud cover. Should be a nice afternoon as far as temperatures go. The aquifer is up a little bit, up a tenth of a foot to 634.2. In your pollen count, that rain last night kicked up the mold. It's in the high category, 1,570. When is our next chance of rain? We'll take a look at that and time it out for you. Coming up. Welcome back. Happy Tuesday. So did you see any rain last night? No, but I heard it. Okay. I was warned. There are little rumbles, but no, no rain on, on my side of the <laughs> All right. You? Uh, you know, I think I saw some lightning, but like, oh. I don't, I don't want to bring up lightning and then Justin say, well, that's weird because we got no lightning. No, you're right. Well, you're right. Just okay. making sure. no, you weren't seeing things. You that's were not great. dreaming. Uh, yeah, there, there was some money in thunder. It, it woke me up, uh, you know, around 10 o'clock or so, 1030. That's when some of those storms moved through. We did not get much rain though here in San Antonio. It wasn't as much as we'd like anyway. And we still got some rain on the radar, but it's not here in town. It's moving away at this point. Let's show you the radar and you can see there is an area of showers and moderate rain moving from Victoria up towards the Houston area. And they've had some pretty heavy rain around Corpus Christi. And I'll show you the rainfall totals in just a second, but they were much, much higher down to our south and east. The rain, yeah, it's out of here. We do have some showers holding on across parts of Carnes County and Gonzales County, but those uh, showers will quickly dissipate as we head into the afternoon. So here's a look at the numbers, about two hundredths of an inch. That's it here in San Antonio. So not much. Uh, Kennedy, about 3,300. Beeville, you get up to about three quarters of an inch. And look at the number down in Corpus Christi, 3.02. So that's where all the rain has been. Victoria to Corpus over to Rockport. Rockport picked up 2.77. But here around New Braunfels, Seguin, San Antonio, just a few hundredths of an inch. That's all. Uh, the biggest totals I could find here around San Antonio specifically, Stone Oak was about three-tenths of an inch. Stinson, same story. Uh, so this isn't going to help us much. Uh, we're still on track to see the driest year on record. We'll see if it plays out that way. We do have some more chances coming up as uh, we get into uh, Friday. Outside right now, we've got mostly cloudy skies, 67 degrees, 68 at Stinson, 68 Kelly, 68 at Randolph. And starting to see some 70s. Now, I showed you earlier where we're seeing more sun. That's west of San Antonio. Your temperatures are going to be a little bit warmer today. 70 in Uvalde, 72 Hondo, 64 Gonzales, 69 right now in Kerrville. And then you've got upper 60s here around Bear County. So your case had 12-hour forecast, mostly cloudy through about 3 o'clock. We, we may see a little more bit more sun during the afternoon, topping out again close to 72. And then 68 by 7 p.m., 68, 8 p.m. should be a nice evening. And then we'll start to pick up some more clouds as we get into tomorrow morning. Uh, there's the uh, big picture with all the cloud cover and the, the edge of the clouds is right there, right over Bear County. So anywhere west of San Antonio, sun is out. And again, you'll probably see temperatures drift into the mid 70s this afternoon. But if you're underneath this deck of clouds to the east and southeast of San Antonio with some rain showers still holding on. Temperatures will be quite a bit cooler. So here's our next storm system. We'll take you up to the Pacific Northwest. Still a ways away. Still has some territory to cover before it makes it into Texas. But this is one I want to watch and here's why. Uh, as we look at the future cast here, yeah, the, the rain we have today goes away. Clouds start to fill back in tomorrow morning. But that storm system begins to approach from the west. And by Thursday morning, we'll start to see some of those showers, very light showers developing. And then as we head into the afternoon on Friday, this is noontime, we'll start to see a line of showers and storms developing along the frontal boundary. And then that begins to move in Friday night. Right now, the timing is around 10 p.m. We could see some storms. Now, I know that doesn't play well with Friday night football. This is something we'll have to monitor very closely. 
but I do think there is some severe weather possible with this line. Then it becomes windy and clears out for the weekend. The Storm Prediction Center has already flagged this area here Friday night for the possibility of some severe weather, and that does include San Antonio. So this is why we need to watch. It's not a guarantee that we're going to get strong storms, but the setup looks good for that. So. We just need to be aware 77 Wednesday, 83 Thursday, 83 Friday, some showers both Thursday and Friday, and then there's that 40% chance of storms coming on Friday night, Saturday, 76 cooler breezy 80 on Sunday. Don't forget to fall back it means more sleep, more or less. We always need more sleep. Yes, we do. <laughs> I think that Sunday is probably the favorite for sure for the majority of us. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thank you, Justin. Yep. All right, the newest addition to the San Antonio sports environment, the Brahmas. We have an inside look at the new pro football team and the XFL. Plus, a baseball stadium in downtown San Antonio. It's not out of the realm of possibility. We're going to explain why in just a bit. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law. San Antonio's newest professional football franchise in the rebooted XFL. Say hello to the Brahmas. All right, one of eight teams that will compete in the XFL, including two others here in Texas. We have the Arlington Renegades and the Houston Roughnecks. Now, the league was purchased by actor and one of my personal favorites, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, along with Redbird Capital, $15 million. And the reason why they believe the third time's the charm for the success and you know, all the games, well, they're going to be carried on ESPN or Disney platform. It's all starting the week after the Super Bowl on February 18th. And if you take a look at the new Brahma's logo, it also features the team's new colors, black and gold. Obviously, a little more attractive for any Steelers fans and the Steelers Hall of Famer, who happens to be the Brahma's head coach. Here it is. Ooh, the Brahma's. Yeah, yeah. The Brahma, San Antonio Brahma's. I'm kind of used to these colors, my favorite colors, actually. It's like the first day of school, eh? You lay out all your gear, what you gonna rock at school, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna rock that, I can rock that up underneath that. Man, I'm gonna rock this, this is gonna look nice. Ah, it feels right. At least you're getting your Brahma swag. Oh, yeah, I actually would. I would definitely buy a jersey for okay. the Brahmas. Okay, jersey, some sweatshirts. So for the XFL draft, it is scheduled next month. Training camp in Arlington and the home stadium for the Brahmas here at home, the Alamo Dome. And speaking of the Alamo Dome, after having a week off to try to heal up, well, the UTSA Roadrunners, they are back to work, kicking off their final four games of the season. And they're starting off with a tough opponent, University of Alabama at Birmingham. UAB, so the Roadrunners, they have the only undefeated record in the conference, Conference USA. They are 4-0 and in the conference overall. They're 6-2. and UAB, 2-3 and in the conference, 4-4 four and four overall. So despite their record, Roadrunners head coach Jeff Trailer says they know this week will be a handful. They're the number one conference leading defense. They have the, the number one runner in the country at running back. They have the number one receiver in the country at yards per catch. They're getting their starting quarterback back this week. They're undefeated at home. They're 27-3 and three at home. Uh, since 2017, they've been the best team in the conference. A lot of respect for them. Uh, when the season started, y'all asked me who I thought the best team in the conference was. I thought they should have been picked to win it. I still stand by uh, going into UAB. Uh, it's not just an opinion. Uh, it's factual. It's one of the toughest places to play in the country. And head coach Trailer and the squad headed to UAB Saturday, 2.30 p.m. A big game in our big game coverage this Friday night. Battle of two undefeated teams in District 28-6A, all to decide the title. Number five, Brandeis, 8-1 overall, 7-0 in the district, facing number seven, Reagan. A 7-2 overall record, 7-0 in the district. So the Broncos' only loss of the season, it came at the hands of the Brennan Bears week two of the season. The Bears now ranked second in it, KSAT 12's top 12. As for the Reagan Rattlers, their two losses also came in non-district play, including their season opening loss 14-13 to Smithson Valley Rangers, of course, in the KSAT Pigskin Classic 2022. Now, after both went undefeated in district, it is time to decide who walks home with the title. 
Being undefeated right now, going into week 10, you know, we got Reagan in front of us. They're a really good team. They're really big up front. Uh, but we're just going to focus on us, focus on Brent and I's football, and hopefully we come out 1-0 at the end of the week. Whoever wins this game wins a district championship, and we wouldn't want it any other way. These are the kind of games you, you know, dream about uh, making big plays in, so we're pretty excited. All right, kickoff Friday night, number five Brandeis, number seven Reagan, 7 p.m. All right, this is a story we've been talking about throughout the day. A group of investors that includes Rackspace co-founder Graham Weston looking to purchase the San Antonio Missions, $28 million. Here's the thing, though. It's not the price tag we're talking about. The idea is they could be moving the minor league baseball club into a stadium that could be downtown. All of this according to a report by the Express News that said the potential location could be San Pedro Creek Culture Park. That'd be pretty cool. Oh yeah, we'll love that it'd be it downtown. Happens. Let's we see. will see. November is National Diabetes Month and managing the disease is about more than just taking medication, while why self-care is also very important. And a big recall to tell you about Hyundai recalling millions of more vehicles because they could catch fire. And that could catch fire while they're parked or while they're being driven. What's causing the issue and how you can get it fixed. And Halloween may be over, and now that means Christmas shopping can begin. If you want to get ahead, coming up at 5 p.m., we will tell you the best things to buy this November. That's after Entertainment Tonight.